everyone! Welcome back to Tabletop Worms. We're going to be teaching my husband Tales of the Valiant before we go to Gen Con. I don't wanna. Brain hurts. Well, the good news is, is that if you know D&D 5th Edition, you'll probably be able to play Tales of the Valiant without too much issue. Oh? Do you know actions, bonus actions, reactions, and opportunity attacks? Yeah. Ability scores, which are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, where every two points increases or decreases your ability score modifier? Yeah. Do you know all of the D&D skills? Yes. Do you understand choosing a race and your background for your character, including adding feats? Yes. Do you know the core mechanics for fighter, cleric, rogue, and wizard, such as battle maneuvers, channel divinity, sneak attack, and arcane recovery? Yeah. Congratulations! You understand 90% of this game. Great. So what's different about it? There are a few things. The biggest addition to the game is the luck mechanic. Once per turn, when you fail an attack roll or a save, you gain a luck point. GMs can award luck points as a reward for clever ideas or surviving difficult encounters. Luck points add a flat plus one per point to a roll. So if you roll a 13 and spend two luck points, your roll is now a 15. You can spend three luck points to reroll a d20. However, you can't use your luck points to alter natural 1s or natural 20s. The maximum amount of luck points you can have at any one time is 5. If you end up with 6 luck points, you roll a d4 and that's how many luck points you currently have. So if you don't use the luck points, you literally lose them. Correct. Races are lineages, and sub-races are now called heritages, although they're not really sub-races anymore. Any lineage can be any heritage. Heritages are more like how you were raised, and background is more like the choices you made. Feats are now called talents, and are split into martial and technical talents. This allows talents to be better tweaked and modified to be balanced. Ritual spells are now separate from regular spells. They don't account against spells that you learn as you level up, so they're essentially free spells. Otherwise, they're basically the same. Clerics can focus on more magic or martial training at level 1, conferring them with these benefits early on. This is because all classes get their subclass at level 3 in this system. Turn Undead is now Turn Profane and now includes Fiends. Okay, that makes sense. Fighters get martial actions at level 1 to give them more options at first level. They need that. ASIs raise your ability score by 1 and are accompanied by a free talent. No more choosing between the two. So you're always getting half feats as you level up. Battle maneuvers are now stunt options, and backgrounds also provide talents, so you always get one at level 1. That's a fairly common homebrew. I do that. So if you get subclasses at level 3, are we still allowed to multi-class? Honestly? I'm not sure. Alright, I guess we'll ask while we're at Gen Con. So do you think you can play Tales of the Valiant now? Yeah, I want to play a dwarf cleric.